This past summer, American University granted me a valuable opportunity through their Summer Scholars and Artists Research Fellowship Program to delve into researching, designing, and constructing a costume that had long been a dream project of mine. Under the guidance of Professor Megan Ram, I dedicated the summer months to bringing to fruition a historical costume intended for the stage, which culminated in the creation of the Pink Paragon dress. Unlike my previous historical projects, this costume aimed to balance historical accuracy for the audience's perspective whilst meeting the practical needs of a 21st century stage actor. Before patterning out a design, I quickly ruled out one thing. It shouldn't be historically constructed. The silhouette is distinctly mid-18th century, where a historical wearer would have worn a shift beneath the dress with no additional undergarments. Stockings fastened with ribbons and heeled shoes were worn as elastic didn't exist then. Over the shift, the wearer would add whalebone stays, a grand pannier, and however many petticoats were necessary to create the desired volume. The stomacher would have been pinned to the stays with straight pins, and finally the gown would go on top, pinned onto the stomacher. One immediate change with this historical approach is that it's not practical for most individuals to put on without assistance. Historically, wearers of such gowns would have had someone helping them change. However, our modern stage actresses may not have that luxury. I aimed for my costume to be something an actor can dress herself in if needed. Moreover, in addition to safety concerns like relying on straight pins, there is an excessive amount of layering involved with the historical method, which is unnecessary for a stage production. Such layering might even hinder an actor's range of mobility, as well as unnecessarily insulating and weighing them down. Clearly, a period dress as it existed in history served different needs than a period stage costume of the modern day, which prioritizes durability, breathability, and easy laundering. All we really need is to create the illusion of the historical silhouette, and we can take Take whatever steps necessary to achieve that. Let's go back to the basics of my plan. I'm dressing our actress in modern store-bought underwear and dress liners clipped to the bra straps to manage sweat, all of which can easily go into a standard washing machine and be replaced as needed. Instead of stockings with ribbons, she wears modern nylon tights. Over top is a steel grand pannier with a cotton petticoat for smoothness. The petticoat consumed around six and a half yards of fashion fabric and an equal amount of lining. Looking back, I could have used less fabric to achieve a similar fullness and skipped the lining altogether to reduce weight. The silk brocade I used, known for its heavyweight nature, became significantly heavier when combined with a cotton lining. Based on my research on similar historical petticoats, such garments weren't fully lined, so there was little purpose in doing so here other than ensuring a neat interior appearance and protecting the wrong side of the brocade. In retrospect, I probably would not have fully lined the skirt. Upon shaping the yards of silk brocade into a skirt, cartridge pleating proved challenging, leading me to opt for knife pleating instead. I hand sewed the waistband into place, custom fitting it to the dress form. While the skirt phase may have seemed deceptively simple in essence, it turned out to be the most frustrating and time-consuming part of the project. Despite my assumption that cutting custom patterns for the stomacher and bodice would be the real challenge, the sheer volume and weight of the skirt proved to be overwhelming at moments. The most significant departure from historical accuracy in this project is undoubtedly in the bodice. I dedicated a significant block of time in my project schedule to draft a pattern and create mock-ups for the bodice, recognizing it would differ from any other costume piece I'd previously tackled. Traditionally, an 18th century gown's bodice would be lightly boned with baleen. However, for this costume, I needed to discreetly incorporate a full set of stays, using approximately 30 steel bones into the bodice. The goal was to mold the wearer's body into the recognized conical 18th century silhouette without requiring a separate set of stays beneath the costume.
Okay, so here is the mock-up of the bodice. Uh, and so the way this works is the stomacher is attached by all the snaps here. You can kind of see them up here and all of them snap open, right? So this entire thing unpins on both sides. And so that's how you would put this on. And then you just put it back on again by snapping all the pieces back. This whole thing has modern undergarments on it so it can accommodate like a regular bra um and then you could also on your bra loop in sweat guards so that you could protect this what i think is the best thing about this is how it still has the historical integrity of this completely conical flat front which is what i was most nervous about especially with a modern bra underneath with the sculpted cups this whole thing is fully boned like stays so it's boned all the way around and in the back. Don't worry about this flap here. This is what's gonna attach to the back of the skirt. You have the seams here with the sleeves. This is all, as I said before, a mock-up. So these are all unfinished and everything. The sleeves are gonna be these um, half-length sleeves. They'll look a little shorter in the final product because these will be turned in a little because these are just my raw edges right here. And then we're gonna do like a fancy decorative piece here but overall the mobility in this is good this is riding up a little high but i think it will be okay when we have the whole skirt attached to the back because that will weigh it down nicely um but overall i think this is pretty okay the one issue is that you can see how this is sitting up a little bit off of the stomacher with the snaps yeah look at that let's assume this is our actress here we have the whole thing. We're gonna put it on just like a jacket. And then all you need to do to secure it is snap them on. And if you were the actor, you could just, you know, do it yourself. But for the sake of this, there you go. It's all snapped on. Another significant challenge in this patterning and mock-up phase was replacing the period typical straight penning closure with a more permanent solution like a zipper or a hook and eye. In other 18th century stage costumes, designers sometimes insert a zipper into the center back of the bodice for functional ease. However, this alters the appearance of the intricately pieced smooth back of the anglaise gown, a defining feature of the style. To maintain the robe à l'anglaise back, I initially considered hiding a zipper in one of the overlapping areas of the bodice front and stomacher during the project's early stages. However, I dismissed this idea due to concerns about unwanted bulk, potential jamming, breakage, or fabric snagging. Eventually, I settled on the use of nickel snaps. As you'll soon see, approximately 10 of them line the sides of the stomacher and the open sides of the bodice, allowing for easy attachment or detachment from either side.
After this major hurdle, the rest of the project was largely smooth sailing. I did not use any pattern when attaching the rest of the gown to the bodice and instead opted to drape the fabric onto the dress form. The gown is also fully lined, something I would not have done again. Even though I used a lightweight linen, five yards of it adds a surprising amount of extra weight to the costume. Here I am putting the gown onto the rest of the costume, and you can see how the stomacher can attach or detach from the bodice. Here I am wearing the whole costume for a late stage try on. I hand sewed some rhinestone buttons to the four sections of the gown that are meant to look like drawn curtains. I'm not sure what these buttons are made of, but if it were the 18th century, they very likely would have been glass paste. I am so fascinated by glass paste jewelry, but perhaps that's another video for another day. That brings us to the end of three months of work. Here is the completed costume. In October, I presented this costume and demonstrated how it worked in person at American University. It was so rewarding to see people look at the costume up close and in person. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more like it in the future. Thanks again to American University for this amazing opportunity and Professor Megan Ram for her support. Stay safe.